Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name's Nick and today we're checking out Cave Story Plus, one of the most well-known and most influential indie games of about the last 10 years or so. Uh, this game made its way into the public sphere via the internet, that crazy thing that you may have heard of by now. Uh, it started becoming popular, I think it was sometime around 2004, and over the course of time for the last, you know, 8 or so, 10 years, almost 10 years, it's uh, 2013 almost now, holy crap. Uh, it's infiltrated a whole bunch of different areas, it's shown up on a few other ported systems, it's been on the, the DS, the 3DS I should say, the Wii, via WiiWare, and it showed up on Steam as a paid game. Now this version is not the original version, obviously. This is Cave Story Plus. Cave Story, the original one, is still free, and you can still download it, and I will provide both links in case you don't want to shell out the $10 for this one, although I do recommend that you do uh, if you haven't already, because as I said, this is one of the most well-known indie games out there, so you probably have seen it or played it in some form anyway. So what does the plus get you? Well, not a ton, but some cool stuff. I mean, you get a remastered version of the soundtrack, and higher resolution graphics, and partial controller uh, support, it said, in the Steam window. I don't know exactly what that means, but it had no controller support for me when I tried to play it, so uh, I mapped it with Joy to Key like I do with just about everything. Still, uh, maybe there's some other points later in the game. Maybe you have to, like, unlock controller support or something, I don't know. And there are challenges, which I don't believe were in the original game, but I didn't play the original game all that much which is going to show my ignorance a little bit, and I'll keep talking and start up a new game here so you guys can check it out. I'm going to go with easy just so we can cover as much ground as possible in this one, although easy may actually end up being a little bit easy, I'm not sure. Oh, it doesn't do the cutscene and I start with a yellow hat. Alright, uh, maybe I don't actually want that. Yeah, let's go back out. I don't want to be weird yellow version of myself, I want to be proper. Alright, start game. Oh, I guess the cutscenes stay gone once you've seen them. That's very strange, because I deleted my save. Alright, so there's supposed to be an introduction scene with uh, some people talking via IM on computer. It's kind of weird, actually, and that's one of the things I've always been a little iffy about. Like, I generally love Metroidvania-style games, and I would consider this one of those. And I, I quite like, actually, a lot of things about this game, but there's just a couple things that have always kept me from really embracing it fully. So I said in the past I've played this... Hey, I thought I unlocked that already. Oh, and a progress. Okay, I got some progress. Um, yeah, I've played the original one for about, I don't know, five or so hours. I can't jump effectively here. I need to use the keyboard, apparently. Or do I need to jump the whole gap? Um, yeah, and I never have got... Oh, that's why. I never have gotten that far in it. There was some weird jumping puzzle that I got, I got stuck. I like, couldn't figure out where to go next, and I gave up. Uh, well, I didn't intend to give up, I just sort of stopped playing it. So my opinion has always sort of been on this weird stasis mode, where I, I never really formed a full opinion because I never finished the game, but eventually I picked up the, the plus version. Oh, and here's one of these cutscenes I mentioned before. And uh, the plus version seemed like a cool reason to get back into it, and I just never got around to it, and... I don't know, it's probably going to make me seem a little silly for just not having even played this to the full extent of what is available considering how influential it is and how much I love indie games. But, you know, I'm trying to remedy that right now, if possible. Oh, I didn't remember you were still there, a little weird puffy thing. Alright, so, uh, yeah, the cool things about this game, I mean, it's, like I said already, a Metroidvania-style game. There is a lot to see and do. Uh, quite a large world to explore, some great platforming challenges. I really like the graphical aesthetic of this one. Uh, in fact, if I do ever make a game of my own, I can only hope to aspire to an aesthetic like this. I actually would love to have a game that looks at least this good, or at best this good, honestly, because how much better do you really want? If you're going to do a side-scroller anyway, and that's what I would want to do. So, um, yeah, I mean, other than that, the things that kind of put me off a little bit uh, were the fact that you can lose your levels, because if you notice, there's a little bar in the upper left corner, you get your levels from crystals and stuff, and you can power up your gun, and if you get hit, some of that stuff can go away. And I'm not a fan of ever losing levels. I think that progress like that should generally be locked in, but that's not up to me all the time. So I gotta shoot this door, like Metroid. And there's more cutscenes. That's the other thing, like, I'm not a huge fan of the slow doling out of the rather strange plot in this game. And I know that's gonna be a little bit of a controversial thing to say, 
considering I think a lot of people quite like the plot in this game. I don't know, I just couldn't get into these weird bunny creatures. I didn't think anthropomorphic bunnies were the right way to go for me. But I'm not judging. If you like this, that's totally fine. I have no problem with that. It's just it put me off a little bit. Um, I, I just don't think I've gotten into the story enough to even understand the context of why this matters. I'm just, I'm in it, like, as a purist for the gameplay part, and the, the story for me didn't really seem like it would be that exciting. But I do want to see if I can figure out what to do and how to progress through the beginning of this area, because I never remember exactly what order to go in. And I remember there's a sparkly down here, I think we're supposed to get that. Something shines brightly, I got a silver locket. Alright, cool. They're kind of cute, though, the little bunny things. Oh, that fish hurts, I forgot about that. Yeah, screw you, fish. So probably, like I said, you've already played this to some extent, and that's fine. And I know this is probably not going to be my most popular watch video, and I'm not totally worried about that. I just felt like it was something I needed to cover. Because uh, there is a part of me that just sort of wants to document cool indie games that are also just generally well-accepted and, you know, a big part of the sphere of what we like to... Uh, embrace in the indie world, and you know, obviously this and Minecraft are like two of the biggest ones. And I, I have, I want to cover eventually, you know, Braid and uh, what's the Bastion, another good one. I would like to cover Limbo and Castle Crashers as well, but like I already beat those on 360, and I don't have them for Steam, so that makes it a little harder to record. Because I don't know if you knew this already, but my PVR has been acting kind of weird, so I haven't really been using it much. Henceforth, why there haven't been more Spelunky episodes. I like that sort of homage to the Metroid theme there when you pick up a new item. That's pretty cool. But yeah, I mean, if you knew this already, or you might not have known this already, but Metroid's pretty much, or Super Metroid, I should say, is probably one of my very favorite games of all time. So anything that plays even remotely similar to that is going to be, at the very least, respected by me, and this one definitely is. Even if I said I have some issues with how the story works or you know, the characters involved. That's just stupid bias on my behalf. So don't, you know, take that too seriously. I'm not actually judging the game for that. So, uh, despite not having played this in, I don't know, like, three years, uh, somehow I seem to remember that there were secrets over there, so... That's cool. I don't remember what's in here, though. Can I shoot pots? No, I can't. But yeah, I really love those, like, the little touches, like the sprinkler thing that it showed before, and the... Like, the crystals, when they bounce around, they're really cool. Uh, there's some great scripted moments in this, some great boss fights and such. Yeah, I'm a- No! No, don't- What are you trying to do? But yeah, I'm just not into, like, talking to them that much. Oh, I'm- I'm the doc- Who's the doctor? I don't know, I'm not really reading this. How do you even say that? Mimiga? Doctor killed male. It's like it's kind of sad. They're like so cute, and they're killing each other, and there's crazy stuff going on. But you know, another cool thing about this game that I don't know if gets talked about all that often is the fact that it's got multiple endings, which for a platformer from a bunch of years ago, it's pretty cool. I don't see that happening all that much. And it's rather ambitious to put so much plot and scripted moment stuff in this, because you don't see that either too often. Usually people stick to the strict gameplay conventions, and maybe that's the thing that I'm picking up on uh, in my biases. I'm sort of seeing that deviation and being like, hey, why don't you just stick to the, the game part, because that's really what I want. Yeah, I want to fight you. Understood. I don't know if I'm going to be good enough to beat this guy. What's his name? Balrog? He's kind of funny looking. It's like a toaster. He's pretty cool, though. He could easily be like a block in a Mario game or something. Oh, that could be a problem. No, no. So if you couldn't tell, I am playing this, you know, live commentary, so if I screw up... Well, I mean, I always, pretty much always, uh, play them live commentary. There have been a couple exceptions, but I always say it. Uh, but yeah, I could end up just being terrible at this. You'll remember it, so will I. I'm sure we'll fight again later. Yay, crystal things! And I almost have level 2 on my blaster. Actually seems easier than I remember. Maybe I've just gotten better at platformers. Since I believe the last time I played this was before Super Meat Boy even came out. Oh, and of course, another thing is if you care about it, you know, Steam achievements are a thing. I'm not sure how much I care about it, honestly, really. It's not a huge deal. There's a treasure chest up there I'm gonna go for. 
Uh, but yeah, if you're into collection stuff and you want to prove you're a badass enough dude to rescue the president or whatever, then you might be into that. So after this point, I kind of don't really remember what happens. Uh, somehow I'm supposed to get over there, I guess, and get that treasure chest. I think there's a some sort of an item you get later that lets you rocket sideways or something. I'm sort of looking at the proportions on my character, too. I'm just noticing how short his legs are. It's kind of silly, uh, but it's cool. So, let's look around. I guess, can I... I'm gonna go save. Yeah, that's a good idea. I would like to save. So I guess I'll probably end up just playing this up until the point where I run out of either things to say or places to go, whichever comes first. Oh, this is a way to get through here, isn't it? Okay. What's in here? Oh, the map system. Maps are very important for games like this. What if you just don't find this? So uh, yeah, I mean, this game has a really great sense of, like, wonder and exploration and all that, and the, like I said, the map is quite large. There's a lot to see. And I certainly haven't seen it all. I think I have to go to the upper right corner now? Sometimes I'm a fan of games where you just have to memorize what to do, and other times it just seems like it's a little bit of an encumbrance. I guess it's just about how much you like the game and how much time you're willing to put in to remember everything. I feel like there was a door up here, though, wasn't there? I used to talk to you, maybe? I guess it's just the... way that I love Metroid so much makes me wish I didn't need to talk to NPCs at all. Like, I would just like to be in solely in control of progression. Do I just go straight to the right? Maybe this room? Oh wait, over here, right. That's what I was thinking of. That's terrible. Alright, you get out of the way of the door, I'll go through it, and together we will not really solve the problem together. We will actually, I will do the problem. And these uh, character designs are wholly adorable, like every single one of them. Uh, maybe not that frog, actually, he's kind of a jerk, but those mushrooms are adorable. And those little puffy things that look like jiggly puffs. Reminds me a lot of Maple Story. Uh, which I believe at the time, Maple Story was not a thing that existed. I really need to power up my gun because this thing sucks. That'll help. Sweet, now I got a double blaster. Giant mushrooms coming after me. He's not a problem now. I'm definitely a fan of upgrading your weapon, but at the same time, I really would like it that you don't have to worry about losing your upgraded weapon if you get hit too much. But I guess the best way to deal with that is simply not get hit. Arthur's Key! Arthur Fonzarelli. Doesn't look like a jukebox. Alright, what's up here? Is, I don't remember. I don't think I can reach it. I need the high jump boots. So, off we go. To, uh, Norfair. See if we can fight Kraid. Maybe we'll get those high jump boots before we fight Kraid. Maybe after. Depending on if we want a sequence break. Uh, I guess I'll save again because I don't want to lose that progress. Might as well hit this life regen thing. Alright, so now where do I go? Left? See, this is the part that I've never been a fan of. I know I have a map. I should probably figure out how to use that. Oh, right. I have a like little inventory system since I get multiple weapons throughout this game. I forgot that's another thing. Uh, like, Metroid's cool and all, but it would have been cooler if there were even more weapons. Uh, I mean, yeah, you have modifications to your beam and stuff, but... I like even more. I wonder how they made this map. It just took all the pixel art and just distilled it down to a couple colors. Looks like there's something above me maybe I can jump up to. But probably not at this point. I think I'm going to need some better stuff. So let's look around. Somebody here I can talk to, I'm sure of it. And then I will... Oh, there's Arthur's key. Arthur's house. Alright, this seems like progression to me. I have to not save obsessively. You guys are going to get just off. So I'm curious to know, uh, oh, teleporter, right, that's how I access everything. I think there's another, yeah, okay. Let's go to the egg corridor, because we need some eggs. 
yeah i'm curious in the comments let me know like what's your experience with cave story in general is this a game that you fondly remember and you know had a great time playing all the way through did you play it just to you know a point in the beginning get stuck and turn it off or some other derivation maybe you never played it at all i'm curious about that as well i do see that there's a energy tank down there is what i'll call that and i do know that those sparks will kill you i believe instantly and I also remember that there was an egg I had to go through to get something, or to maybe to progress the story, and then there's like a boss at the end of this corridor. It's weird, I don't know why I can remember this, it's been a long time- Oh, nice beam upgrade. I like this beam, this is a nice one. Oh, I feel strong now. I don't want to lose this. I think I've taken, what, like one or two hits so far since I started? Mostly due to stupidity. I'm not trying to brag like I'm really good at this, because you'll see later on I get quite bad at this. Uh, when the enemies get tougher and I don't have sufficient ways to defend myself, I feel like I should just fight this guy. But I know this isn't the only way to go. Maybe I should have gotten the health tank first. Or do you even fight him here? Maybe he just... Oh, that's rude. Don't, don't hit each other. You're just bunny people. Be nice. What are you doing? You're so mean. Come on. Oh, he just runs away with her. Alright, well, the princess is in another castle, I suppose. There's another heart container. I'm gonna call them a different thing every single time. Uh, save point. Right, the save point is not that, it is the disc that- Ooh, excuse me, I meant to go- Yeah, I'm so used to pressing up to go through doors that pressing down really throws me off. What's this dude doing in this suit over here? He's not- Dangerous, right? Highly unusual soldier from the surface, are you not? Uh, yeah, apparently I'm an amnesiac also, which is one of those things that immediately sort of turns me off a little bit. Like, amnesiacs in video games? Come on, we've covered that ground hundreds and hundreds of times. I remember not being able to get to that health capsule before, and now it's like not even a thing. Is it because I was trying to play with the keyboard? It could have been. So it's uh, kind of interesting, like, I don't remember enough about the original game to be able to really contrast it effectively versus the plus version. And a lot of people would probably say, like, why spend $10 on this uh, when you could just download it for free? Well, I mean, generally, uh, my answer to that would be, if you can afford to spend the $10, do it to support an awesome indie game. You know, that was somewhat formational, or fa at least part of the foundation of what helped get people's public consciousness going about that there even are things called indie games. Because that is not something to take for granted, it wasn't always that way. So, you know, I mean, look at it if you have to, like a donation, if anything, you know, for a good cause. But, if you can't afford it, I don't see any harm in grabbing the free version at this point, still. But, I do feel like the improvements are pretty decent. I mean, just having the, the soundtrack, which is an exceptionally good soundtrack, uh, available in a higher resolution format is kind of nice. But, you know, there are those among us who also value a sort of a lo-fi approach when it comes to game music. Um, I can vacillate between those two opinions sometimes. It's nice to have the option anyway, that's the, the best way to look at it, and in this case you do have that option if you do... Oh, that thing hurts, I didn't realize. Um, yeah, if you do get the plus version, you have the option to switch back and forth between the original graphics and the uh, high def graphics, or the and high def is we're using that very loosely here, um, and also the same with the soundtrack. Get on there! Barely made it. Turn on all the computers. Very important. What did I get? Oh, weapons of missile mass destruction. Okay. Powerful weapon has limited ammo. Collect additional anim yeah and ugh, ammunition from enemies. Let's turn on all the computers down here. Oh, uh, one of them's red. Two of them are red. What can I do about that? Flying dragon egg number one. Status abnormal examined for This is how you're supposed to find out that there are a couple of eggs that you can go in. But yeah, this is one of those games that's like, I really am glad that I can play it on a control. Whoa, that's not what I meant to do. Yeah, the threshold on my 360 wired controller is not always great, and sometimes if I use the analog stick for just a second, uh, then I end up having the center be off, and then it'll start running me in bad directions. Um, I do actually use... there's a, an option to set your threshold in Joydeki, 
which I highly recommend if your control stick is a little bit on the old side. Set it to something like 10. Although mine is like not only on the old side, it's also like worn out. Uh, so maybe more like 15 for me or something, but that's like how much uh, it would need to be pressed to even do anything. If you couldn't figure that out already. And pardon me if I'm like talking down to anybody. I'm not trying to, uh, as far as, you know, knowledge about this stuff. I realize covering a game like Cave Story, it's like, I'm sure we've all been there, done that a while ago. But I just wanted to cover it, you know? I, I kind of explained that already before. I just want to document certain games. I still don't know if I'm likely to do Minecraft or anything, but, you know, we'll see. Stranger things have happened, right? Let's go to egg number one. No! I thought I had longer. I do want to retry. I forgot where I set myself. Oh, right here. That's fine. Do I keep my... Yeah, okay. I thought maybe it would reset my gun just to be a big jerk. Didn't, though. I really love the way those crystals bounce around. It's so cool. I don't know what it is about that. Something has to do with the graphic style and the fact that they're all, like, shiny and they make this nice little clinky sound every time. You know, all in all, I mean, this is a really good package as far as a game goes. You know, the graphics, the sound, the controls, the gameplay, there's a lot of really good stuff going on here. And even though I already sort of proclaimed that there were parts of it that I wasn't a huge fan of, uh, please don't let that dissuade you from trying this out if you haven't already. I need to go when he's over here, that's the problem. Alright, how do I go in though? Can I... Oh, is this not... Okay, you jump first. And this is, what, a missile upgrade, or is that... It's nothing. ID card? I don't have that. Crap. I don't know if it's a safe idea to go further down, but I guess I'll try that since I don't really have anything to lose. Oh, I didn't mean to go in. Just need to fall instead of jump. Should be safe once I'm down here, though. I think there's multiple of these sparks. Can I go in all the eggs, or is it just some? I don't remember. No, I don't think he will go in this one. Okay. Oh, I guess a spark follows your screen or something. I thought it actually was a bunch of different ones. Well, this is the scary way to go. I don't know that that's a good idea for me to go here. And I do need to set up my controller to uh, somehow be able to effectively use my inventory items. So right now I'm still going to have to use the keyboard if I want to switch back and forth between weapons. I think this time I'm going to have to actually like play this game all the way through. It's just, it's too influential and too good to just ignore. Well, not necessarily ignoring it, but you know what I mean, like, to, uh, pass up. Get out! And I actually totally respect the fact that there are some pretty serious, like, jumping challenges later on. They're not, like, Super Meat Boy level, but they are difficult. You know, at least, uh, if you're trying to do it on the keyboard, maybe. Ah! Crap! Okay, I can still jump over it. I don't know why I was so scared there. Well, I'm at the point already where crystals are pretty much meaningless, so that's unfortunate. I wish there were more weapon levels. I should go back in here. And save again. That way if I die to that spark one more time, I'm not going to be so worried about it. And I do want to grab that energy tank at the beginning. At some point, I think I can teleport back to the original town or something. Those elephants are pretty easy. I kind of feel bad killing them, though. Like I said, everything's so adorable. And animates so cutely. Kawaii! Like the definition. Those bees look like uh, something straight out of Super Metroid, actually. I don't know if they're actually bees, but I'm calling them that anyway. Alright, so where is the egg I can go in, other than that one I just found before? And also, how am I supposed to get past that? I don't think that's even possible. Am I supposed to come from another angle or something? Because none of these eggs are open on the bottom. There's one of them somewhere other than the number one. I guess maybe I wasn't paying attention? Maybe I have to use missiles on something, that could be as well. Well, I do need an ID card, so maybe I'm already getting to the point where I need to uh, wrap us up and do that off-camera. I do want to attempt getting that health thing. 
but I'm not sure it's even possible. Maybe if I run right behind it. No, that's that's already bad. Let's try this again. No, I need to go... As soon as it's getting to the wall, I need to start falling and then run. I'm so slow! Okay, got it. Alright, so now getting back... Though, that's gonna be impossible because, well, maybe not impossible, but as soon as it passes me, I need to be already down. Alright, this time I'll get it. There we go. Get out of there. Yes. So I'm just gonna teleport back and see if there's something readily apparent that I should be doing. Like how I would get this ID card that it spoke of. I'm doing pretty well as far as gameplay so far. I haven't really hit a huge stumbling block. I haven't gotten too lost. And I haven't really taken too many hits either. Okay, there's nothing in here at all. That's already taken. Yeah, I gotta totally assign my inventory to be my left and right bumper. I think that'll be useful. What's this guy doing over here? I forgot. He's drinking something? Oh, the only girl left is Sue. It's a bad position to be in as a society. You want to avoid that at all costs. Alright, what's over here again? This is the one fishing. I don't know that I can do anything here. No, nope, get out of the water. The water actually reminds me a lot of uh, Kirby on the NES. If you remember, the, it had this like same sort of transparent -y thing to it. So I should probably be paying more attention to the story at this point. Uh, I'm gonna let you guys do that. Is there a secret up there in the top of this? I feel like there probably is. I obviously can't get up there yet. No, maybe not, actually. I can see all the way up. I do also like the holding up and down actually lets you see in that direction, not right here, but where there's room to see. Uh, once I found out that that was a thing, like I feel like games that don't have it are a little bit lacking. I really like the ability to see in that direction when you want to look. That's what, one of the things I like so much about Spelunky. Feels like they got all the platforming stuff right, and then the gameplay, you know, being pretty much infinite on top of that. Even better. Ah, this is probably where we're supposed to go. Assembly Hall. Reminds me of what you have to do in RPGs all the time, where you just, you kind of don't have a good cue as to what's next to happen, or if you did, you know, they didn't make it super obvious for me anyway. Uh, and so you just walk around and talk to every NPC until the way opens up where you get a quest, or somebody tells you in bold red letters, go here! But, yeah, probably if I'm paying more attention this won't be an issue, I don't know. Uh, so up here again, there was that door which I still can't reach. Although now I do have rockets, so I gotta remember rockets are a thing. And uh, Arthur's Grave... I don't think that's gonna do anything for me. I can't, like, shoot that or anything, so if it was collidable, maybe I would consider shooting it with a rocket. Even though that would be desecrating the grave of good Arthur. I'm assuming he was good. So about this cage up here? Nothing really. I mean, if you hit down on any surface, he just pops up that little question mark, so it's not like he's addressing the question. What is it? The farm, right? And there's nothing over here at all. Just this guy sitting in his little house. So you guys just eat flowers, huh? Yeah, I, I already read this, please. Thank you. Alright, so most likely what happens is I need to go look around more in the egg corridor. It doesn't seem like there's anything here, so if I need to, you know, just click on everything, try and walk into every possible area. I did get past this area by quite a bit when I played it originally, but like I said, it's been years, so... The information is not still stored in my mind actively. And, uh, this was the place we go through to get out. Alright, so I guess this is as good a place as any to wrap up this episode. Uh, and again, like I said, I'm not too worried about if this is not the most popular Indie Impressions episode ever, because I'm sure you can find hundreds of people who have already played Cave Story for the internet on their own channels. I'm not worried about it. I just, like I said, I needed to document this. I needed to talk about it a little bit, put my views out into the world for you guys, and get a little bit of feedback, and uh, see what you guys think. So, 
That's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. As always, remember to head on over to the website, www.indie-impressions.com. Check out all the videos, old and new. Sort them by distribution method, by payment style, whatever you like. That's all readily there for you to check out. And then the Facebook page is facebook.com slash indie impressions. Helps me out a lot if you want to leave a like on that. It also will allow you to get every day's new episode delivered right into your live Facebook feed. If that's convenient for you, I, I definitely appreciate you doing that. Then you can stay up on all the stuff that's new on the channel. I also sometimes I put news updates and contests and stuff on there too. So there's all kinds of goodies. And lastly, if you have any comments, criticism, suggestions, or you're an indie dev and you just want to send me out your uh, game to check out for the show, at Indie Impression or at Rockley Smile on Twitter uh, are the ways to contact me. Preferably at Rockley Smile. At Indie Impression is just where uh, all my uploads get aggregated. So actually, uh, uh, honestly, if you could, probably don't tweet at that one. Just uh, follow it if you'd like. But that is entirely up to you. So that is going to do it for another episode. Thank you again so much for watching. Make sure you come back again for another one. I do a new episode every single day. And if you're new to the series, thank you so much for showing up, and I hope you stick around. So thank you very much again. Have a lovely night, and I'll see you tomorrow. Later. Later.